I suggested in one of my previous videos that I was going to buy this steering wheel for the Jag. Several of you noted that my channel is supported by a laser cutting company, Send Cut Send, and that I could maybe just make my own steering wheel. It would be fun to make a wheel, but I kind of like this one, and in the end, I'd probably end up spending more money making a wheel than I would to just buy one. So, I did both. The steering wheel that came with the Jag is not very inspiring. This cross pattern is kind of cool, but done in a pretty boring way, so I designed a new one. I tried doing something similar to the Nardi wheel that I was looking at. I also tried the original cross design, but with an aluminum center and a wood outer. I messed around with a few different shapes for a bit, but I didn't really like anything I came up with. I kind of just want to buy this wheel. But then I remembered that I own another car, a 1964 Honda S600. The steering wheel that originally came with this car is pretty awesome, but the one that came with my car was pretty torn up. The wood was not salvageable, and I just sold it along with several other parts. I ended up with a steering wheel from a boat. Why a boat? Well, because it was really cheap, like basically free, and the right diameter. But it was also in pretty rough condition and has spent most of its life wrapped in hockey tape. I've always liked the original Honda steering wheel, but people keep bidding these cars up to insane prices, so parts like original steering wheels are going for more money than I spent on the whole car. So, I made a steering wheel for the Honda, but I decided that I'm not going to buy any new tools to do this. I'm only going to use tools that I already own. I'm also going to keep this super simple. In fact, the only tool that you need to make this is a router. That's it. Here's the basic idea. We're going to make a flat aluminum center. Some steering wheels are dished, but the Honda was originally flat, and I like the simplicity of a flat wheel, so we're going to do that. We're going to make the wooden part by making two half donuts. Not half like this, half like this. On the inside of the donut, we're going to router out a little channel on each side that the metal part will fit snugly into. Then we just glue the two donut halves together around the aluminum center, and we have a wheel. The original wheel for the S600 was a bit larger than I wanted, but I did want to go a little bit bigger than the boat wheel, so I traced out a picture of the original wheel with a diameter kind of in between the two. Perfect. Now how to make it. We'll start with the middle. This is the easy part. After I traced out the old wheel, I sent off the DXF file to get it laser cut out of 3 16 inch aluminum. When that showed up a few days later, I got busy making it shiny. I polished it up using progressively finer sandpaper. Are you supposed to wet sand with aluminum? Whatever. After sanding, I used some polishing compound on my angle grinder. I don't recommend this tool for this. Its speed is not adjustable, and I'm pretty sure it's moving a bit too fast for it, but it did work. Ooh, shiny. It's not a perfect mirror finish, but it's going on this car, so it'll be fine. The aluminum part is done. Normally I'd have super British matte in here to translate aluminum to the British aluminium, but this is going in a Japanese car, not the Jag. What's that you say? The Japanese also say aluminium? You're telling me that we are the only country in the world that says aluminum? Uh, of course we are. Here's super Japanese matte with the translation. I have some walnut that I was going to use for this, but I'm not sure that I want that dark of a color on the wheel. Also, it's too thick and I need a planer, and I don't really want to buy a planer. I do have some maple that's about the right size. It's a little lighter than I'd like, but... Oh, you know what we could do? Roasted maple. I did this on my guitar that I built and never learned how to play. I got some maple and roasted it in my oven to give it a slightly darker caramel color, and it came out pretty nice. Back then I had an oven with a fan and a pretty consistent temperature. Now I rent a house, and of course that means I have the cheapest possible appliances. Look at this. A genuine hot point. Seems like hot point is not a great name for an oven. It implies that one part of the oven will be hotter than the other parts. This will be bad for roasting maple, but we'll give it a shot. I wrapped the maple in some oven bags. This seemed like a good idea to keep my house from smelling like roasted maple. It did not work. That's fine. It kind of smells like someone drizzled a bit of maple syrup on freshly baked cookies and then set them on fire. This seemed like it was working really well for a while. My temperature sensor said the oven was staying at a consistent 360 degrees Fahrenheit. But after about an hour, I came in and the thermometer read 430 degrees. Thanks, hot point. It even melted my oven bags. I thought the wood might be salvageable, maybe it's just crispy on the outside, but no. It kind of looks like someone just burned some wood. Okay, so we're going to go with just regular maple. To make our two donuts, we're going to start with octagons. We could just glue together two pieces of wood and cut out the rings, but that would leave us with a very weak steering wheel. 
Wood is much stronger when it's loaded along the grain. The fibers all run in one direction, and if you try to bend it in that direction, it's strong. But if you bend it perpendicular to the fibers, it will break. This is bad for a steering wheel. It could break, and then you would be picking splinters out of your hand while your car careens off a cliff. To eliminate this possibility, we're going to make the whole wheel out of the strong part of the wood. And to do that, we're just going to cut out strips and arrange them into an octagon. Eight trapezoids make an octagon without a center. It's kind of a low-resolution donut. If I was making a steering wheel for a Cybertruck, I'd probably just stop here. Now, the trapezoids need to be pretty accurate so that all the edges will line up into a continuous octagon. So to make them accurate, I drew up a template and had it laser cut out. I changed my mind on the size of the wheel after I ordered this, which is why it's offset a little, but it worked fine this way. I rough cut out the trapezoids and then screwed the template to the wood and used a router to cut it exactly to shape. I own a router, which I thought would be perfectly fine for this, but after looking at it for a moment, I thought I could really use a router cabinet. And if you're buying a nice router cabinet, it seems silly to have the small battery powered router, so I bought a new router. And I know I did say that I was not going to buy any new tools for this build, but I lied. I need to glue the pieces together, but if I just edge glue these pieces, the connection probably won't be very strong. I need more glue surface area. There are several ways to make connections stronger, including using a tongue and groove, or whatever this ugly thing is called. I decided to just make a simple shelf. I don't know if this is an acceptable way to strengthen connections, but we're going to find out. Then I just needed to glue them all together. I added a bit of tape to the bottom to make sure I got good pressure on the glued connections when clamping it. If I were to do this again, I would also make a template to put in the center to make sure everything was square. And by square, I mean octagon. Once the glue is set, we can trace out the steering wheel design using this template. This is just a piece of MDF that has the same outside and inside diameters as our donuts. When tracing the template, I adjusted around slightly to find the best looking wood and to avoid some of these gaps that probably shouldn't be here. Once that's traced out, we just roughed out the shape with a jigsaw. I know I said you didn't need a jigsaw earlier, but you don't technically need one. You could just router this all the way around. Actually, I'm going to say that you need a jigsaw. With these extra cut pieces, we can test my glued shelf to see how strong it is. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, pretty strong. No. We only need two of these donuts, one for the front and one for the back, but I made three because I'm probably going to screw one up. So back to that template we used to trace out the wheel. I had some holes cut in it so I can just screw it to the maple. I'm using screws that obviously don't go through the wood, so it'll just have holes on the inside. Then router. I used a router bit that follows the template with a bearing and cuts it to match the profile. You always want to feed the wood into the cutting edge. You never want to move the wood the same direction as the spinning bit, except in a few minutes when I do this exact thing. A couple of times while doing this, the router decided to grab a chunk of wood and just rip it out. This was not awesome. I'm not sure how to prevent this, and it actually happened to me twice on my guitar build, which is why it's a bit skinnier than a typical Telecaster. I finished the profile cut and switched to a roundover bit. This gives a one half inch radius. Now what to do about the wood that got torn out. I picked it up and glued it back onto the steering wheel where it ripped out. After the glue dried, I googled some ways to prevent this tear out from happening again, which seems even more likely now. One suggestion I read a couple of places is to feed the wood the same direction as the router bit is spinning. You know that thing I just specifically said you never do? Yeah, that. This is a little nerve wracking. You have to hold the piece really tight so it doesn't just grab it and rip it out of your hand. Then you just feed it in really slowly, holding tight. You can definitely feel it wanting to grab, but after a moment, it's all cut off and you're good to go. So the roundy part is done. Now we need to make the groove on the inside where the aluminum will go. To do this, I needed another template, two templates actually, bolted together. I'll use another one of these edge cutting bits with the bearing. There's probably a name for these things. The bottom part of this template sits inside the maple. The top part will allow us to cut the groove right in the middle of the donut. It also has these pockets for the three aluminum spokes. I picked which side I wanted to be up and put the maple in the template. I set the depth to half of the aluminum thickness and went around the edge. All of these templates were made by my friends over at Send Cut Send. They also made the aluminum center. If you're looking for fast, accurate, low-cost laser and router parts, check them out. They're basically my favorite company in the world. With the channel cut out, it's time for a test fit. Oh, oh yeah, nice. Nice and snug. Perfect. Now I just glue it together. I know I said earlier that all you needed was a router when actually you need a router and a router table and also a jigsaw. Well, since this is a woodworking project, you also need lots of clamps. Guess how many clamps you will need and then buy four times that many clamps. You'll also need sandpaper because the next part is to do a lot of sanding. So much sanding. Just sand until all the glue is gone. 
All the scratches are gone, all the sunlight is gone, and your partner has left you. Then sand a little bit more. I finished it off with a coat of True Oil, three coats actually, and maybe a couple more later. If I was going to do this again, I'd probably use slightly darker wood like mahogany, and I'd probably make the donut a bit smaller in diameter. It's currently one inch, but I might go with something like 7 eighths or 22 millimeters in the future. But I am happy with the way it turned out. I do need to figure out how to make new center cap, but that is a project for another time. And there it is, easily the nicest looking thing on this car. Looks great. And I know it has been several weeks since I've done anything with the Jag, but I promise I will be working on it very soon. Probably next week. Probably. Do you like your automotive ideas half-baked and questionably good? If so, hit that subscribe button, because I have a lot of them. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, and thanks for watching.